Hi guys, so this is a bit of an experiment because obviously uh, we have limited space inside my uh, room here. Um, but what I'm going to talk about is uh, based on the last video I uploaded, based on uh, close in fighting uh, with the longsword. Um, and uh, you know, I said in the title for that the fact that you know movies often get it wrong, so they often come in and they cross swords with e with each other and they kind of tussle for a bit and then they spring apart uh, whilst you know having a conversation uh, and furthering the, the storyline in the process. Um, that's fine. I understand that choreography in films has to be certain ways, um, but what we're looking at here is what actually happens at that kind of range. And the fact is, when two people are crossed swords. Uh, at this sort of range. There's a whole raft of different things that can happen. One of the things that I didn't show that clearly in the last video I uploaded, but which I want to mention, which it's a very key important factor, is if you're crossed blades at this distance, the most obvious thing you can do to offend the opponent, and this is the thing I always find myself screaming at the, uh, at the movie screen or at the TV screen when people don't do it, is they're crossed here, is very simply to lift your hilt up and strike onto the top of the head. Okay? Very simply, if you're crossed equally at this point, you can hit the person's head unless they resist to the side. Now the techniques I showed in the previous video were based on the fact of if the person closes this line so that I can no longer do that. Okay? So if we cross in the middle again and uh, my opponent here feels that I start to strike towards their head, they have to close that line in various ways, that side, and that's what opens up this side, okay? So one of the basic techniques in the, in the system that I teach from, which is Fiore Delivery, um, is simply as you get that resistance closing that side, to immediately then close in this side with a pommel strike, okay? And Fiore says you can remove four teeth uh, with the pommel of a sword. Okay, um, and he said as he's seen done, so he'd, he'd seen someone pommeled in the mouth and four of their teeth broke. Um, now clearly the pommel in the face isn't going to finish off the person by itself. Really all it's there to do is create an opening. So for example, a typical follow-up after this would be, if we come to the, to the bind, as we call it, the cross, and I threaten the person's head this side, they close that line, I immediately come in, pull them in the head this side, and then I can hit them as I move back out, as I showed in the previous video. So it's actually the final cut to the head which finishes them off, but the pommel gives you the opening and the time to do that and causes them pain uh, in, in the time being. Um, what I want to look at uh, briefly here are the, uh, are the disarms, uh, or the disarm that I showed in that video. So in Fury's system, there's a number of different disarms. A disarm being when you uh, somehow get the weapon off the other person, okay, and take it away from them. Uh, there's a number of dis different disarms shown in Fiore, and in other systems there's even more disarms shown. But what we're going to look at here is one very basic type of disarm that works on a simple principle. I just put my sword down. So if your opponent is right-handed, if you turn their blade, keep hold with both hands, if you turn their blade uh, in a clockwise direction, like the hand on a clock, there comes a point at which their wrists cross and can cross no further and the sword will come out of their grasp or if they do keep hold of it, they will end up twisted to such a point that they can't really do anything useful. So they're very vulnerable at that, at that point. So one of the versions of this uh, that Fiore shows is your crossed blades. Uh, imagine that I've threatened here, they set the line up here. Imagine I've gone to pommel them in the face and they've stuck their sword up to prevent the um, sword hitting them in the face, to, hit, to prevent the pommel from hitting them in the face. At this point, their sword, because they're protecting their face at very close range, is quite vertical and you now have the perfect opportunity to do this type of disarm. So one version of it is at this point, bearing in, hand, uh, bearing in mind that my hands are very, very close to the opponent's sword, I actually drop my sword, so I'll put it down, okay? Now you drop your sword at this distance, you then reach around to the pommel with your left hand, the uh, strong or fort or ricasso of their sword with your right hand, you turn the entire sword around, taking it off them, and then finish them with their own sword.
Okay, this is actually shown in the polack section, so you can do it with any kind of two-handed weapon, but and you can do it as a very aggressive closing in thing as well, whereby you launch the attack and as they defend themselves, you drop your sword, carry carry on in, take it out of their hands and cut them on the way out. Okay? Um, another version of this is where you keep your sword. <coughs> so we've crossed here. I press you with the cut, they defend from the first cut, I come in with the pommel, they defend from that pommel, okay, and as I come in here, what I do is I pass around with my back foot, putting my left hand over their arms, like that, I scrunch their arms together and using my pommel, turn the sword around here, whoop, there we go, taking it out and get my point online as quickly as possible. I don't need to hold their sword, I can drop the sword. Okay, so <laughs> there's different versions of it, there's, there's three main versions in fact, but all of them work on this general principle that if a person is right-handed, if you turn the sword clockwise, there comes a point at which they can't hold the sword two-handed anymore. I should mention if they're left-handed, so if the person has the hand at the uh, top of the grip there, the left hand at the top of the grip, the reverse is true, you have to turn it the other direction. Okay, so there we go, something to think about, I hope that's been useful, thank you.